good dog you are. Hey, the people are out there. Hi, guys. Hey, it's Robert Earl and Cascade the Wonder Dog out here at the uh, Eco Ranch in far west Texas. I am getting ready to work on, as the title says, the turret build. Um, as well as a couple other things that are also in the title. But the turret build is going to be my most ambitious project to date. Now, we all have limitations, and if you watched my videos, you know, I'm kind of journeyman-ish. I'm not good at any one thing, but I can do a lot of things. I've been okay at my skill level with all this. This is a real push, a real extension of what my skill level is and how much I have to learn. And I want to share the build with you, so in the comments uh, where I did the preview on the turret build, I asked people would they like to see it all in one big build that would be an hour or segments. And of course segments one, so this is segment one, hopefully it won't be too long. So what I'm doing now is I'm just excavating for the footing and the foundation, which I'll get into in another video. I just wanted to talk to you right now about it and say we're starting it. It is something that's way above my skill level, but I think we've got it down and tweaked it and done enough research that um, I can do it and I can share with you how I did it so you might be able to. Now I want to caution everybody. Although it's a how-to, it really isn't a how-to from an expert or somebody that's licensed and bonded and blah, blah. I'm showing you how I'm doing things here in the desert. I have a specific soil type here that you may not have if you live in New Orleans, for example, or in Houston with that gumbo soil. So you have to take your soil types into account when you're talking about footings, and you have to take in your area when you talk about building a... Um, uh, a specific structure. In other words, the architecture that you want where you live. Uh, some people wouldn't want to do a southwestern style building or a Spanish colonial, in this case, building if you live in New England. That doesn't mean you can't build something rustic and really pretty looking um, there on your own, provided you live in one of those counties that will allow you to. So this is going to be a little chopped up because I'm just going to talk off the cuff and chop it together. So endure the chopping for a couple minutes and uh, let's get going. Hey, pal. Okay, I'm going to sit down while I do this. Luckily, I have a bench here. <laughs> uh, so the title says, the um, introduction to the uh, turret build, politics and trolls. Now, whenever anyone says politics, we're going to automatically, especially since it's February of 2017, we're going to automatically think of national politics in the presidential election. That's not necessarily what I'm, go what I'm going to talk about. I do have very strong feelings about last November's election, but really, it doesn't truly belong here unless it's part of the discussion of why I'm doing a certain thing, and it isn't. But when I say politics, I'm talking about local politics. The kind of politics that end up giving you regulations like, and somebody correct me, is it Massachusetts or Connecticut? That gives you a law like one of those two states has, where a man can't even go in and change a light switch in his own house without hiring a licensed union electrician and pulling a permit to do it. Now, politics gives us building codes and code inspectors and that for a reason. And that reason, quite, quite honestly, is when you have row houses or houses that are jammed together, if one house is a fire hazard or in danger of collapsing, it's in danger of hurting the neighboring house. I understand that. If, it's, if, if a sewage disposal system isn't correct, it can cause a cholera outbreak. And, and like I often say in other videos, just study what cholera and typhus did in the 19th century, and it will put the absolute fear into you about handling human waste properly, even to the point of me not wanting to even think about a, a composting toilet. Now, in theory, composting toilets are wonderful, and in theory, humanure is wonderful. The problem is it's humans that are handling that stuff, and humans get lazy, and humans, even when they're not lazy, make mistakes. And a mistake can cause a cholera outbreak. Look at what happened after the earthquake in Haiti a few years back, the huge cholera outbreak that killed far more people than, than the, um, uh, the actual earthquake itself did. So. That is something that I understand that I'm all for regulating human waste. Now, I say that, but I live in a county where, as far as I know, 
uh, at least the last time I checked, which was just before we moved here seven years ago, we didn't have requirements for a septic system. In other words, you can dig a hole in the ground and crap in that hole, and that's perfectly legal. You can have a cesspool, that's perfectly legal. I built my own septic system here, which would be a violation everywhere else. That was, at that time, as far as I know, perfectly legal. And the septic system works, and I'm in no danger of cholera or typhus or any other disease coming out of that. Um, I understand the politics of that. I've often called in other videos and, and in my writings, unfairly I might add, I've said that uh, I've called the building inspectors butt crack building inspectors. Well, I actually didn't mean butt crack building inspectors, I actually meant butt crack code enforcement officers because the only time you ever meet a code enforcement officer is if there's something that you may have done wrong and he's out there with an attitude to begin with, you give him attitude back and there you go. And of course, it's usually some guy that doesn't, that the word diet never entered into his consciousness and his pants don't fit right, hence the butt crack, butt crack. A lot of these people are good, honest, decent people that are trying to earn a living. And I heard an interview, and I'm going to post a link to that video in this. Uh, it was, it's a rather long video. It's an actual documentary about, and mainly about building with Cobb. And the reason I think it deals with Cobb is because Cobb is, for the beginner, an easy thing to handle. So are earth bags. They're a very easy thing, very forgiving thing to handle. So this was mainly about Cobb, but they discussed building codes and enforcing building codes and the purpose for building codes. And they were interviewing the, and I don't know if he's still the head of the uh, Marin County, California um, uh, building code department, but he was saying that, that his job is actually their job is to enforce the building codes, not to say whether they're good or bad, and oftentimes they, they think, well, you know, this, this is not a bad, this is a bad thing. I don't, shouldn't have to enforce it. But his job is to enforce it. Uh, and again, I understand in large areas, but if we were to take and say, let's say we're into five acre parcels each, even two acre parcels, where you can feed a family of six off a two acre parcel very, very easily. You can do it in a, in a residential uh, suburban lot, but Mrs. Brown down there is going to be complaining to code enforcement that, that, that you don't look right or your house isn't painted the right color. Uh, so um, I advocate people moving out to one of the counties that um, allows you to choke your chicken when he does that, allows you to build like this, or if you, if, if you just can't find it, then Nelson Mandela said many, many years ago that when you've exhausted all the legal means and the only thing left, the only way to make change left is civil disobedience, and civil disobedience it is. Uh, which I don't mean rioting, but I mean violate the law and fight them and fight them and fight them. Uh, I don't think we need to do that. Maybe the political climate in this country right now is going to be one that isn't in the best interests of alternative building, alternative energy, green building, man-made climate change, disruption, mitigation. But the pendulum always swings both ways. So it can swing to the right now and back to the left, and eventually the country settles in the center. So. This video that I saw, um, and I'm going to post a link to it, is a very good video and I would urge you to watch that to discuss and figure out about politics in your particular area. Uh, for those of you like me that just don't have the patience, just pick one of the 32 or so counties in America where you can build like Debbie and I are doing. Move your butts there. Um, your roots. So all that being said, because I don't have butt crack building inspectors, actually butt crack code enforcement, I don't have building inspectors and I don't have codes, I have the ability to build this place the way that I'm building it. You have an obligation to build things correctly, build things that will last. Uh, so in other words, you don't want to start building a stone wall right here on this ground because the ground may actually move and it may not be able to support it. So you need to know what you're doing. You need to do your study. And I don't like this word any more than I like 24 7 365. Uh, but you do have to do your due diligence. That's two words. Due diligence. Do that. Know what you're doing. Build it. And then overbuild if you can by about... By about 50%, if you overbuild by 50%, you're going to find that even if you, what, what you think is 50% isn't, you're still going to be right at or above what would be the code or the uniform building codes. 
Study the uniform building codes even if you live in a county like this. I studied the Florida uniform building codes when I built uh, when when I was in Florida and I've I, I've transferred that over here. Now I did a few things wrong. I'm pointing up here because one of those headers wasn't right and I almost paid the price for it. But generally speaking, I have built this place to the Florida uniform building codes and it will stand up to a direct hit from a from a horrible wind. Doesn't look like it, but it will. One last thing I want to discuss, and I've been, I've had many people that get in the comments say, no, leave them alone, don't say this. But no, I, I want to talk about trolls. And, you know, trolling somebody on the internet, sometimes you don't even know you're trolling. You know, it's, hum it's human nature to be excited or interested in bad news or something that's not good. It's not human, in it's, it's not human nature to say, oh, look at the cute, fluffy little chick. The thing you want to say is, oh, that cute, fluffy little chick, it ain't the right color. Or to agree, oh, yeah, you did that absolutely correct. No, you're going to find the fault and you're going to say, see, you're an idiot. You didn't dig that hole deep enough. And, you know, and I'll say often, and for the most part, the people that are trolling you are, in fact, this way. They are, they are people, sometimes using the term loosely that are sitting in front of their computer for hours and hours and hours. They really don't have anything else to do between going to McDonald's to eat or getting their morning latte or going to work. And all they do is they look at videos from people like me that are out at 64 years of age, busting their ass for seven or eight hours a day. In my case, I have some physical problems. I'm still out here doing it. But they're going to take and look at somebody like me and find the one or two or three things I'm not doing exactly right. And they're going to comment about it, even if they know nothing about it. So when I get a troll that comments, that's part of the reason my comments are moderated, I go right to the troll's YouTube page and see what he's posted. I had a guy go into a whole big long thing about the way we built the smokehouse, and I went to his YouTube channel looking at all, and maybe he's got something that, that I missed here. And um, all it was was uh, videos of him covering hip-hop songs and this guy this guy was a white guy not that there aren't white rappers but i mean this is a white guy covering hip-hop songs and putting those online and he's complaining about the way i built my smokehouse so i mean take that for what it's worth with these people but a lot of times you don't know that you are blank yourself until somebody from the outside says here look out of the box and look down on yourself so a lot of times a guy that's trolling you is not really a troll uh, or doesn't even identify himself as a troll and for you guys it, before you say well you should have done this or why didn't you do this or you're a stupid idiot because you did this I want you to take a real good hard look at yourself and your life can you do better have you done better will you done be do better or are you just jealous because I'm doing it? Now, jealous doesn't mean that, oh, I wish I could do that. Jealous means, well, he's doing something and having fun. I'm not having fun in my life, therefore I want to destroy his fun. You get a lot of that. Those are the Mrs. Browns out there. By the way, I've talked about Mrs. Brown. When I grew up in Gross Point, Michigan, we had, we had a little bit of money, so we had a great big lot. We lived on... Uh, probably a couple acres uh, in a in a eventually a subdivision and our, our spare lot was our spare lot that my dad had bought so we could all play next door we had a surgeon and his wife um, and her name was mrs. Brown and she would sit in her window and she would watch us kids all day long and anytime we did anything wrong She's on the phone to our mother, or she'd come over and talk to our mother. Oh, I saw him doing this, I saw him doing that. Well, one day she asked me into her house to move something for her, and I looked at that window, and she had a chair, and she had she had a, a coffee set up right there. This was before there, were Mr. before there were Mr. Coffees, but there were roosters. And she had a pad and a paper and a pair of binoculars right there so she could see what we were doing in our windows. That's a Mrs. Brown. So if you're a Mrs. Brown and you feel like you want to comment on my stuff, comment away, but it's not going to get posted unless I see that, you are, that, that you've got some knowledge on that. And that's the way we all should be. I think all, all the comments should be moderated because I, I don't want people on here coming here using profanity. Now, one guy said, one guy 
made a big thing about, well, you don't like profanity, yet you say damn all the time. Yeah, I do. It's a habit that we get into. Damn and uh, crap, and then as you get worse from crap, I think store high in transit, uh, S-H-I-T, store high in transit. We'll say things like that as well. You should limit, you should put the words that are, that are off limits. We got a better idea. If you think a word might be off limits, don't use it. That's simple. And then I wouldn't have to moderate the comments because I, I, when I've got children reading and looking at my, um, my, my comments and my videos, I don't want those nasty words. Now, I drove truck for 45 years. I heard them, and believe me, I can cuss in its place. But I'm not going to sit in the McDonald's and use those nasty words. I'm not going to put them online for, for, um, for, for genteel people or children to, to use. We have to set some examples somewhere. Uh, so that's that's why the profanity thing comes up. Now, when it comes up, when it comes to trolls, hey, come on, get out and do something. Don't sit there and comment negatively because I'm I'm going to read it. But hey, you think it really affects me around here with all I've done and all I'm going to do at this age and all I've done getting to this age? I'm just going to read it and say that poor sap sitting in his mother's basement. That's all I'm going to say. So anyway, I think that covers it. Politics, trolls, oh, and the introduction to the turret build. So I'm going to finish digging this out and get my footings in. Then I'm going to discuss the footings and some of the building I'm going to get into. So if you followed me this long, by the way, that's another thing the trolls say, you talk too much. Well, hey, when you have to give a lot of information, you do talk too much. If you want to live life 140 characters at a time, well, we just had an election where 140 characters made a big difference, and you know the jury's out on that, even with the voters, the positive and the negative voters. Uh, so you can't live life 140 characters at a time. It just can't be done. But we are going to discuss rubblestone. Using rubblestone, we're going to discuss soil textures and soil. We're going to discuss medieval architecture. Believe it or not, something called flying buttresses comes into play with this kind of architecture that we're doing. We're going to discuss some mortar work uh, and some general engineering because we're going up 14 feet, actually probably, well, right at 14 feet-ish, uh, including the roof on this turret. It's a big project for somebody like me to do. It's a big project for anybody to do. I'm doing it all by hand. I'm screening the, um, uh, the sand for the mortar mix. I'm digging out the footing. I've, we're gathering up our rubble stones. Debbie has been doing a fantastic job of gathering our rubble stones. And um, we're going to put it all together in the next video. won't be blah, 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 blah. It's going to be a lot of doing and not so much talking. But I did want to get this introduction out of the way. I want to deal with politics, uh, trolls, and the introduction. And I'll give an apology to the, um, um, to the inspectors out there. I did not mean building uh, uh, butt crack building inspectors. I meant butt crack code enforcement officers. And that's only because they've always got an attitude when, had an attitude when they came to me because guess what? I was doing something that didn't match code. So let's, um, I'm going to get Cascade the Wonder Dog and we're going to get back to digging because I got a whole day's worth of digging to do again before I can even start getting this thing leveled off properly. I will see you folks in the next video. I hope this was helpful and informative. Gave you a little bit of insight on how, how I think um, on my videos or on my... Cons uh, uh, bleh! Give you a little bit of insight on how I think on life in general and on construction. And even though you may not agree with my general overall politics, if you're out here building for whatever reason, if you are a prepper, if you're somebody that uh, is an anarchist, if you're waiting for the end of the world to happen like two minutes ago, or if you're, or if you're somebody that's concerned about man-made climate disruption and the effects it has, resource depletion, and the fact that we are three billion people over this planet's capacity and counting, there's something here for you, and I will try to keep my politics to a minimum, but it's going to come out some. So just unfortunately, and I say deal with it, not in a nasty way, but you will have to deal with it because to change it would be to change me and I'm not ready to do that. So Cascade the Wonder Dog and I are back to work and I will see you, um, I'll see you in the next video, which is going to be the footing. And until then, it's Robert Earl and Cascade the Wonder Dog out here at the Eco Ranch in far west Texas. See you guys later.